<laughs> yeah, that's kind of weird. All right, let's see if I can make this done as quickly as possible. Ladies and gentlemen, tangent, right? We figured out that sine was our y and cosine was our x, right? Yes. So tangent, remember, is y over x, right? So there's a couple points. Now remember, there's three unique coordinate points. We have a point on our unit circle that has uh, one half, radical three over two. We have another coordinate point on it, which is radical three over two, comma, one half. And then we have radical two over two, comma, radical two over two. Right? Those are kind of our three unique points besides like our zero and our one and stuff. But those are like our three points that we've been dealing most commonly with on our unit circle, right? Teachers, pardon the interruption. At this time, will you please turn your TV to channel six for the Mustang News? That's really cool. Yeah. Okay. So if you guys remember, remember here's your X and here's your Y. Well, they're saying sine is radical negative three. So how did they get to that point? Right? Well, remember, all they really did was put your y over your x. So what we need to do is determine which y over x is going to yield us a uh, radical 3. And I'm not going to worry about the negative because that's just going to deal with you know, what uh, your direction is. So if I take radical 3 over 2, actually, let's put it over here. Um, if I do radical 3 over 2 divided by 1 half, right? Multiply by the reciprocal. That cancels the one, and that cancels to a radical three. Hey, guess what? We got our answer, right? What happens, and you can, you know, obviously if you put this over this, you're gonna equal one, right? And just because I want to. If we switch this, just to show you, multiply by your reciprocal. Then we have one over radical three, as those cancel out dash lines to the denominator, and you get radical 3 over 3. Okay? <clears throat> so this one produces radical 3 over 3. This produces 1, and this is going to produce your just a radical 3. You kind of see what I did? Okay? So now, well, yes, now we're dealing with the negative portion of it, right? So if I was going to look at my unit circle, when... When would this be negative? Well, all, all you have to have is to have one of them be negative, right? So you could have, um, so we have this point, which is one half comma radical three over two. Hold on, guys. Negative one half radical three over two. Then we have our two points down here, which is uh, positive one half radical 3 over 2. And then we have this point down here, negative 1 half, radical 3 over 2. So all of these, um, actually not all of them are going to be negative. Because if you look at this, this is never going to produce a negative portion, right? Right? So this angle doesn't work. Here, this is going to produce a negative radical, radical 3 when I do my work. But guess what? That's not within the that's not within the range of your uh, inverse tangent function, is it? Because the inverse tangent function, remember, it's only between negative pi over two and pi over two. So this doesn't work, nor does this angle. So now we just need to determine, well, what exactly is you know this angle? And you can think about it from here, from this one, is uh, <clears throat> is sixty degrees. Right? 60 degrees. Teachers, for an interruption. <laughs> when the bell rings, seniors need to go to the cafeteria. All um, seniors must have your IDs on. Ninth and 11th graders will report to their homeroom. Then juniors will report to the auditorium with 